There's a, a phrase I use every day um, as a reminder, as a sort of mantra, and it's uh, everything is an expression of the one. Recognize the perfection of every moment and the transience of every moment and choose to submit to peace. The idea being that there is only the one. It would be tempting to say the one thing, but the one thing is not a thing, it's just the one. And everything else is a perturbation in the one. Or an expression of the one. That's to be understood from uh, an awareness point of view. And in mind-body, that would make very little sense to the mind-body, to the first or second worlds. But um, so I'm sure there are people, as I would have done myself, who would say, what does that even mean for something that is nothing to have perturbations in it to express itself? But we accept in physics that a field which is essentially no thing um, can have perturbations, perturbations which create quasi-particles, um, you know, uh, a, a disturbance in a field, uh, a, a collapse of a wave function and the emergence of a what seems to be or what we describe as once it's been ob observed as a particle are nothing but perturbations in a in a, a field and so if, if you were to wind that back to the original field in which nothing exists and yet all of this is a manifestation of the feel of that field then that would be a a um, a good picture or image to use for for that idea so the one expresses itself we are the manifestation of that expression or those expressions and so everything is an expression of the fundamental field recognize the perfection of the moment well, what does that mean then well it means that the one fundamental field is as it is it cannot be any other way and therefore every expression that emerges in that field and everything that manifests from that expression or everything that is a manifestation of the of the expression cannot be anything other than than the original field offers up and so we can't regard any of those things and of those manifestations as being good or bad we can't do that anyway because that's a human value that we lay on things whether something's good or bad i mean is it good that that a gamma ray burst from a black hole could destroy an entire galaxy is that good or is it bad on the one hand it disperses energy and matter into the universe and is the source of creation so it's that's, that's good but if there were a, a planet in that galaxy that was inhabited we would consider that to be bad. But the universe doesn't care. The universe doesn't judge that as being one or the other. And so that's a human trait. And so the um, condition of the one is neither good nor bad. It is as it is. And it can only be then perfect in itself and everything it produces then is perfection 
So recognizing the perfection of every moment is recognizing that this is a manifestation of something that is in itself fundamentally perfect. If you examine the trees here, at what point, if you stood and watched a tree for its lifetime, would you say, ah, now it's perfect? And at what point was it not perfect? Is it perfect when it's a sapling? Is it perfect when it's in mid-growth? Is it perfect when it's old? Is it perfect when it's fallen and died? They're all expressions. None of them are good or bad. They just are. And the other part of that is the moment. A moment is a period of time, an event occurring from point A to point B and a period of time in between. That's the maybe the wrong way to understand a moment. By a moment, I mean the constant array of perturbations going on in the one field, which is timeless. So again, with the mind-body, we have a certain understanding of the word I'm using, time, and we can't imagine an eternal timeless thing, a constant now which is would be the state of the of the fundamental field and those manifestations expressions in that field we would need to have a period of time for those to happen and that's the way we see them from the mind body we see them as a as a passing of time but in the field itself those things are don't happen in time they timeless, constant, ongoing expressions that come and go. Every moment is an event unfolding, one single event unfolding, one oneness unfolding. Instead of seeing it in slices of time, a tree begins as a sapling, grows, midlife, gets old and dies. That's mind-body cutting that process into slices and making it a process from A to B in time. We see something similar in in um, our perception. When you sit in stillness, time seems to slow down and sometimes almost disappear completely. Once your brain becomes active, you start to think and have thoughts and emotions and you observe them and you get caught up in them. Then you have something to measure. You're measuring the time of a thought. You're measuring the time between thoughts. And time becomes, manifests itself in the very process of thinking. In the moments where thought ceases and you are only aware there's n nothing, there's no way of measuring time. And so you lose track of time. Time dissolves because there's no way, there's no sp place to put point A and point B to make a measurement. There's no thought to go from and to. So it's a sort of an analogy or a, a reflection of um, of expressions in awareness and perfect moments and moments of time. And that is the transience of every moment, um, the constant f ebb and flow of those expressions. They're all transient. They come, they go, they come, they go constantly. And you can watch them. You can watch thoughts coming and going, emotions coming and going. You can watch things and things, objects in the world coming and going. Um, a cloud ch changes within seconds. Sometimes a tree might take decades. Mm. Geological time scale, uh, atomic time scales are so minuscule that we can 
we can't perceive them. You know, it seems to be there are many time scales, um, and yet they all happen in the timeless, never ending now, constant, never ending now. So that's where the transience comes in, that's a, that, that the manifestations constantly change, although it itself remains timeless, still, never changing. But the fundamental truth itself does not change, it's always the same. And its fundamental nature is stillness, to relate that to mind and uh, sensations when you are in stillness and there are no thoughts and there are no perturbations of mind and no constant flux and flow that you have to be involved in when you sit in stillness you might be aware of all of that going on but the stillness is absolutely still and absolutely quiet and that's not a zombie like state of not feeling anything and I mean feeling not with your nerves or not with your emotions but you know it's not a sensationless state the sensation the fundamental property of that state is peace stillness so the last part is choose to submit to peace choose is important because it means you are willing to as opposed to I'm going to try to but rather fall back into willingly and submit to stillness and peace and then you become as the fundamental field timeless still blissfully peaceful able to observe but not be involved in the manifestations arising from it so everything is an expression of the one recognize the perfection of every moment and the transience of every moment and choose to submit to peace instead of diving into body mind and being inside and involved in thoughts and emotions and the first and second worlds and, and emerging yourself in that and not being able to escape from it observe that happening from the point of view of absolute stillness and awareness recognize it for the manifestation that it is in the same way we are able to recognize solid objects around us as a manifestation of particles in fields that are non-existent that are empty and we accept that as fine so the same with stillness